and good morning. My name is Dini Fajrina, along with my friend, Dr. Shaviza Idayu from Faculty of Dentistry, Reactive and Sunaburu. Today, I would like to present a systematic review entitled Antimicrobial Activities of Labesia Pomilia. The presentation outline consists of introduction, objective, methodology, results, discussion, and conclusion. Firstly, we will look at the introduction first so that we will have ideas on how the systematic review is all about. Labisa Pumilia LP, or locally known as Kastik Fatima, is the queen of herbs in Malaysia with various traditional uses. The most common three varieties of LP found in Malaysia are Vaalata, Va Pumila, and Vala Solata. The herb was proven to have bioactive compound like saponin, phenolates, <coughs> flavonoids, fatty acid and phytoestrogen, which are responsible for its antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-agent, anti-carcinogenic, and estrogenic effects. Next, we will look at the objectives. This study aims to provide a systematic review of antimicrobial activities of Labisia pumilia. For the methodology, a comprehensive search was conducted using Scopus and Medline via EPSC cohorts with specific keywords for related studies published between January 2000 until December 2020. The main inclusion criteria were research published, uh, sorry, research articles published in English and studies reported the effects of Labisia pumila on microorganisms. Meanwhile, the current study excluded review articles, news, letters, editorials, or case studies. Papers were split in three phases before chosen for the systematic review as well in Visual 1. As you can see in the first phase, the papers were identified by using MEDLINE and SCOPRES. In the second phase, abstract of the remaining papers were screened to meet our inclusion criteria and duplicates were removed. And in the final phase, text of the remaining papers were read thoroughly to exclude any paper that did not meet our inclusion criteria. The papers were then screened by all authors for the final selection before approving them for the data extraction phase. Next, data extraction were performed independently with the use of a data collection form to sanitize the data collected form. Sorry, uh, the data collected from each study. The following data were recorded from the studies, which are the first one is the types of pub, the types of Labisa pumilia extract from the studies. The second one is a brief description of the method used in the study. And the third one is a brief description of the result of the study. And the final one is the comments and the conclusion of the study. Next, Nishamiza Idayu will continue. Okay, uh, I am Nishamiza Idayu and I will continue with the result part. We found five identified studies that met the inclusion criteria and all were in vitro studies published between 2011 until 2015. The five papers that were included in our review are papers from Esan Karimi et al. 2011, 2013, and 2015, from Maso Fazliana et al. 2011, and from Nazwal et al. 2011. For Labisia Pumila extract, all study done by Esan Karimi use all three varieties of Labisia Pumila, which are Va Pumila, Va Alata, and Va Lanciolata. And then study by Nazmol didn't mention the specific variety, while study from Maso Fazliana use Va Alata species. Okay, also for Labisia Pumila extract, study done by Esan Karimi et al. 2011 and Nazmul et al. 2011, they use crude extract of Labisia Pumila. Meanwhile, study by Esan Karimi et al. 2013 and 2015, use microwave assisted extraction. Last one, study by Mansu Fazliana et al. 2011, use standardized water extract for Labisia Pumila extract. Okay, moving on to methodology. Study done by Esan Karimi et al. 2011 
do analyze the content of phenolic, flavonoid, and saponin. And then, the antibacterial assay was done using distribution method, while study for antifungal assay was done using agar wear diffusion method. The next study by Esan Karimi et al. in 2015 used agar wear diffusion method for antifungal assay and in 2015, Esan Karimi et al. used this diffusion method for antibacterial assay. And then, study by Mansu Fazana et al. 2011 used agar diffusion sensitivity assay for antimacrobial antimicrobial activity tests. There are also infection assays done which are adherence assay and invasion assay to assess for Labisa pumila va'alata effect on urinary tract infection. And then the study by Nazmo et al. 2011 used standard disk diffusion method for antifungal assay. Okay, for the result, study by Esan Karimi et al. 2011 Proof that the leaf bud contain the higher saponin levels than root and stem in all three varieties. And then for antimicrobial activities, Labisa pumila va pumila had the highest antibacterial activity against gram net positive bacteria, while Labisa pumila va alata had highest activity against gram negative bacteria. Meanwhile, the leaf bud of Labisa pumila va alata proved the highest activity against the fungal tested. Next study by Mansur Fazlana et al. 2011 only proved a distinct zone of inhibition against Staphylococcus aureus. It was highlighted that there is a significant reduction in the number of intracellular bacteria in Labisa pumila va alata treated T24 cells if compared to non-treated control cells. However, it did not affect the bacteria adherence to T24 bladder epithelial cells. Okay, next study by Nasrul et al. 2011 showed no ability to stop the candida albicans and the presented of low antifungal activity against the fungal tested. Moving on to the next study by Esan Karimi et al. 2013. It shows positive results as the leaf exhibit higher activity towards the tested fungi at concentration of 450 microgram per well in all three varieties. Okay, and last but not least, for the result, further study by Esan Karimi et al. in 2015 showed low inhibition if compared to kanamycin. To be specific, it was concluded that Labisa pumila va lanceolata had lowest inhibition against bacteria if compared to va pumila and va alata. And then the gram-negative bacteria were found to be less sensitive against the extract if compared to gram-positive bacteria. Okay, uh, as for the discussion, bioactive compounds such as flavonoid, saponin and fatty acids are responsible for antimicrobial activities of Levisa pumila. And then, based on five studies, it can be concluded that different plant parts exhibit different results with the leaf show the best antimicrobial activity due to higher content of important compound. And then, geographical factors such as climate and soil condition might influence the efficacy of Levisa pumila medicinal activity due to different composition of bioactive compounds. That is why, study by Esan Karimi in 2011, 2013, and 2015 raised Labisa pumila under similar glass house condition for 18 months regardless of their different origin. This was also the reason of failure in Nazmo study to stop the growth of candida species by Labisa pumila, whereas Esan Karimi reported Labisa uh, pumila va pumila had highest activity against the candida species. Okay, uh, for the conclusion, Labisa pumila antimicrobial activities was proven to be mild to moderate against certain microorganisms. So, further studies are required to determine the molecular mechanism and its specific action as an antimicrobial agent before clinical studies are conducted and being commercialized. And as for example, in dentistry, it has potential to be commercialized as the mouthwash to treat oral cancer.